In this video, we take another look at floating point numbers and how they're normalized. We have learned that having a fixed binary point for numbers restricts the range of numbers that can be stored in a particular number of bits. The solution is to use a floating binary point, which gives us greater flexibility as to the range and precision of numbers we can store in the same number of bits. Here we have three 8-bit number lines, each with the floating point in a different place. Where the binary point is placed affects how many of these bits we have available to store the whole number and the fractional component. The largest number we can store in each of these formats is shown here. For the first one, it'll be 0111.1111 or 7.9375. The second version, it's 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This is 63.5. And for the vinyl version, it's 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 3.96875. Note the trade-offs here. The more bits we assign to the whole part, the larger the number we can store, but at the cost of the accuracy of the fractional component. The more bits we assign to the fractional part, the more accurate a number we can store, but at the cost of the number size. Remember, with 2's complement representation, the leftmost or most significant bit, MSB, will be 0 for a positive number or 1 for a negative number. Accepting the need for a floating point, we have a new problem. When presented with a string of bits that represent a number with a fractional component, how do we know where the point should go? The solution is to split the number into two parts. Mantissa, the number itself, and exponent, the position of the binary point in the number. With this method of representation, we always place the binary point between the first two digits on the left of the mantissa. We then use the exponent to move it where it needs to be. So let's start by converting the exponent. Note that the most significant bit in the exponent represents minus 4 as we always saw it in 2's complement. The exponent is therefore 2 plus 1 or 3. The exponent's 3, so we need to move the binary point of the mantissa three places to the right. We move it to the right as the exponent is positive. We're now finished with the exponent. All it was doing was storing how many places to move the binary point. We can now ignore it. We're left with 0101.0. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up the columns for a 1 in. Notice again how the MSB represents minus 8 as we're using 2's complement. We have a 1 in the 4 column and a 1 in the 1 column. 4 plus 1 is 5. Padding with extra zeros is fine as they are not significant numerically. Here we have three examples of floating point binary numbers stored in eight bits, where the first five bits represent the mantissa and the last three bits the exponent. The first example has an exponent of two, meaning we need to move the binary point two places to the right. The second example has an exponent of three, meaning we need to move the binary point three places to the right. The third example has an exponent of one, meaning we need to move the binary point one place to the right. We can now get rid of the exponents and replace the number lines in the mantissa with the correct versions. It's at this point we spot that all three floating point numbers represent the decimal number one. Having multiple ways to represent the same number is a problem. We need a consistent way to store floating point binary numbers. There's only one way to represent any given number, and to do this, we normalize the number. All positive normalized numbers start with 0, 1. All negative normalized numbers start with 1, 0. Going back to the previous example, the third number therefore is the correct representation of the number 1 in 8 bits using this format. Therefore it is normalized. It starts 0, 1. So let's just recap. We've normalized floating point binary representation. The mantissa and exponent 
are stored in two's complement. The binary point always starts between the first two digits on the left of the mantissa. Positive numbers must start 01, negative numbers must start 10. The mantissa holds the actual number or value. The exponent is the position of the binary point. Positive exponents move the binary point to the right, and negative exponents move the binary point to the left. We will now go through some worked examples. We're going to store the following three base 10 decimal numbers in normalized floating point binary 3.5, 6.75, and 2.75. We're also going to convert the following normalized floating point binary number into base 10 decimal 01100111. In all examples, we're going to use eight bits, the first five for the mantissa and the final three for the exponent. For each example, we suggest you try pausing the video and working through the problem yourself on pen and paper before unpausing and seeing if you've got the correct solution. So let's store 3.5 first as a normalized floating point binary number. First, write out 3.5 on a standard fixed point number line. Next, move the binary point so it sits between the first 0 and 1. Remember, normalized positive numbers must start with 0, 1. So we've just moved it two places to the left. As we had to move the binary point two places to the left to get it to a normalized position, we now move it two places to the right to put it back in the correct position. We now know the exponent must be plus two. Using the format of three bits for the exponent, because it's stored in two's complement, the exponent must be zero, one, zero. The last stage is to store the mantissa, which is simply the number from the original number line, remembering it must start zero, one. And we now have the correct representation of the decimal number 3.5 in this format using normalized floating point binary. Now let's look at our second worked example. Let's store 6.75 as a normalized floating point number. First we write out 6.75 on a standard fixed point number line. We move the binary point so it sits between the first zero and one. Remember normalized positive numbers start zero one. We just had to move it three places to the left. As we had to move the binary point three places to the left to get it to the normalized position, we were going to have to move it three places to the right to put it back in the correct position. So we know the exponent must be positive three. In three bits for the exponent in two's complement, positive three will be stored as zero, one, one. The last stage is to store the mantissa which is simply the number from the original line, remembering it must start 0, 1. But there's a problem. We've run out of space in the mantissa. We can't store the final one, which would be representing one quarter. This actually means we can't store the number 6.75 in eight bits using this format. The closest we can get is 6.5. Now don't panic if you see a scenario like this in the exam. You may think you're wrong, but the exam board is testing your understanding of the process. The number could be stored accurately if you had more bits available. Unfortunately, with this format, we have reduced accuracy and we lose a quarter. For our third example, we're looking to store 2.75 as a normalized floating point binary number. First, we write out 2.75 on a standard fixed point number line. Next, we move the binary point so it sits between the first zero and one because positive normalized numbers start zero and one, and we just had to move it there two places to the left. As we had to move it two places to the left to get it normalized, we're gonna to have to move it two places to the right to get it back, so we're gonna need an exponent of positive two. We have three bits for our exponent in two's complement, so a positive two there will be zero, one, zero. The last stage, as always, is to store the mantissa, simply copying it for the original number line, remembering it must start zero, one. We now have the correct representation, of the decimal number 2.75 in this format using normalized floating point binary.
For our final worked example, let's convert the normalized floating point binary number 01100111 into base 10 decimal or deanery. We know the first five bits of the mantissa and the last three are the exponent, so we can add the number line above them as appropriate. Also remember, the binary point must start between the first two digits in the mantissa. The exponent is minus one. It's a minus four plus a two plus a one. That tells us we need to move the binary point in the mantissa one place to the left. Now, we can't easily move the binary point off the left of our screen visually, so we're just gonna slide the bits across one place. We're now finished with the exponent, so we can disregard it, and we end up with the number 0 0.01100. We apply the normal binary weighting line and add up any columns with a one in. We've got a one in the quarter and a one in the eighth column, so that's 0 0.375. Notice how we had to backfill with zeros to make the number work. And this is allowed as zeros are not significant numerically. If the number's positive, you backfill zeros. If the number's negative, you backfill with ones. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How does a computer store fractions or real numbers? What do we mean by a normalized floating point binary number? And how do you normalize both positive and negative floating point binary numbers? So that's all you technically need to know for the exam, but if you're interested in learning a little bit more, pop your pen down and watch this section that goes beyond the spec. So have you ever wondered if all numbers can actually be stored in normalized floating point notation? All positive numbers must start with 0, 1, and negative numbers start with 1, 0. So how do we store, for example, the number 0? Taking that a step further, is zero considered a positive or negative number when using floating point? Maybe it's neither or even both. What about other mathematical numbers that can't be stored by a computer? For example, infinity, the result of zero divided by zero, the square root of a negative number. What we've shown you is what you need to know for the exams. The reality, of course, is more complex. For years, there was no standard way. Some systems use fixed point binary, which fixes the point within a register. Furthermore, where the point is fixed depends on how a particular computer system has been designed. Although floating point is far more common, different systems still use different methods. The number of bits being used for the mantis for an exponent could vary. Some formats place the mantissa bits to the right of the exponent bits. Some formats use sign and magnitude to represent negative values, while others use two's complement. In 1985, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers defined the IEEE 754 standard format for floating point binary, which is used by most modern computers. IEEE 754 defines the layout for the various floating point numbers. Single precision 32 bits double precision 64-bit, and quadruple precision 128-bit. The wide adoption of IEEE 754 has addressed the problems around reliability and portability caused by the many diverse floating point implementations. IEEE 754 standard establishes an agreed set of principles and ways of dealing with all these previous problems. Although you don't need to know the details for the exam, here on the screen now are some of the problems which have been overcome as everyone can use the same agreed standard. We can now answer the question from earlier about odd or special numbers. IEEE 754 reserves a handful of exponent values that have special meanings depending on the value of the mantissa. If the exponent is all ones and the mantissa is all zeros, the number being represented is treated as infinity. If the exponent is all ones, but the mantissa is not all zeros, the number being represented is not a number. For example, the result of zero divided by zero. If both the exponent and the mantissa are all zeros, the number being treated is represented as zero. 
if the exponent is all zeros, but the mantissa is not all zeros, the number being represented is extremely small, known as a subnormal or denormalized number.